What is up YouTube? I'm back again. It's your boy C9 Kenma. We got another top three video today and it's going to be on, you guessed it, Specialist. So to start off, I'm going to do this in no particular order. Once again, these are just the top three Specialists right now in the game in my opinion. And we're going to start it off with Abathur. This guy is really good right now in the current meta. He really works well with a lot of heroes like Illidan, Chen, any any tank pretty much. His global XP is really good. I'd say there's a few maps he's not very good on like Dra like Dragonshire and Tomb of the Spider Queen are probably some of his weaker maps, but he is so good all around on all the other maps almost that he is definitely a top three hero, a top three specialist in this meta currently. So let's talk a little bit about what, how you are would be building this guy right now. So if you're going to be building any type of team fight oriented comp, you're going to be looking for pressurized glands with what you'll, you'll be doing the mind build. So you'll be doing a prolific dispersal with vile nest and then of course 10 is always going to be evolution because it has a 50 second cooldown you will also be looking when you go ultimate evolution you're going to be looking to run teams that have good clone targets such as Jaina and Vala for example at 13 you will be going soma transference 16 you will be looking for and Venom Spikes or Adrenaline Boost, depending on what your team needs. Most likely in Venom Spikes. Level 20 will be Hive Mind. This is not situational. You always use Hive Mind. And that that will be your team fight build. Now, if you have, for example, an Illidan comp, it's going to look almost identical, except at level 4, it's going to be a general overload for the a general overload for the attack speed and then everything else is going to be the same level 7 you might go needle spine you might go needle spine but you'll vileness is still really good even without the level 4 upgrade and mule is obviously very situational i don't think the koreans or the chinese players ever take mule but i feel like mule gets so much value on maps like Sky Temple and Mines and Black Hearts Bay that it's really good in certain situations. So be on the lookout for that. The split push build that you see a lot in NA, which I don't really think is very good because it, it this is this build is gonna be a lot better when the, the teams that you're versing aren't as high caliber, but it's survival instincts. And then the mind build once again, prolific, vile nest. Ultimate Evolution, and then they go Bombard Strain for the range and the damage, and 16 is Locust Brood, and then 20 is either Nest or Hive Mind, and that is the split push build that has gained popularity in NA. I don't think it's very strong in a real high level competitive game. You're probably going to see the build that I first talked about at BlizzCon more often than not. So, that's a... Uh, that's good for Abathur for now. Let's go on to the second top three specialist. So, who will it be, boys? She's there. Sylvanas. You thought she fell off. You thought she got nerfed. Well, she. you know what? She did get nerfed. She got nerfed into the ground, actually, with the Venom. It was actually not even a nerf to her besides her damage on her ult. But with Venom and Blood for Blood getting changed, it actually nerfed her burst damage dramatically and since her since her burst damage got nerfed she is a lot she is a lot like weaker in certain comps but i don't think she has i, I think at high level play she is still really great her passive is just allows you to do what no other hero in the game can do her her silence is just it's an AoE silence. It's always going to be good. Her survivability is just ridiculous with her haunting wave. And at level 16, once you can get... Uh, what's it called? Once you get Cold Embrace at level 16, you can help your team melt tanks. 
So she is still, in my opinion, a top two. Her, I'd have her and Abathur as my top two. Abathur is probably number one. But these two are definitely in my top three. And now, well, let's talk about a little bit about talents for her for you guys. So level one, there's a, she actually has a few talents she can go level one. Lost Soul has been gaining popularity in some comps. I actually, I've tried it out. I, as someone who's played a lot of Sylvanas, I really don't like this. With the Wind is great if you don't need PvE, but when do you not need PvE? Barbshot is by far my favorite talent, level 1. I almost get this every single game. I never get Corruption. So, level 4. And Venom is pretty much still the go-to. I've seen Ranger's Ambush taking, taken a few times. Now, Ranger's Ambush is going to... Ranger's Ambush can be used like for faster PvE clearing and and more tower damage and whatnot, but overall I, I tend to think Envenom's still the the way to go. So at level seven you almost always see unstable poison taken. Shade form was gaining popularity when the like mass CC and assassination comps were out. But since the meta swi switched to like less damage and more sustained damage you tend to see unstable poison taken for just wave clear because it's more important than the stealth level 10 is wailing arrow all the time and then level 13 we have evasive fire pretty much you get a face of fire if you don't need spell shield and that's pretty much the, that's how that goes level 16 cold embrace is the way you want to go even if you have a comp that has like a jaina with Northern Exposure, or you have a Brightwing with uh, Critterize, tell the Brightwing to get the Extended Polymorph and still ha just have the Jaina go Northern Exposure and Cold Embrace because you can ch you can chain them and have them taking 25% damage for a long time. I don't think it's ever worth getting Blood for Blood anymore after the nerf. She does so little damage that you need to have an amplification and damage in my opinion. So maybe if you have Toronto on your team, you could sacrifice the Cold Embrace, maybe. But I I think this is a must-get now. 20s, obviously, it's just it's Bolt. There's no other option. You need Bolt. I mean, you could man up and get Fury or Deafening Blast, but Bolt's the way to go. It's the safe way to go. And let's see, who rounds out the top three? So let's just have a special mention category. Special mention, Asbinen, still really good on maps like Black Arts Bay and uh, Dragon Shire and Tomb of the Spider Queen. But he's he just he takes too much time to ramp up and people are finally finding out how to beat him. But still see him being either picked or banned on those three maps. Uh, Vikings. He's played on Garden Terror. That's about it. And then Zagara. Zagara, you know what? She was she was really close to making my top three, but the better teams in the world are finding out how to abuse her and not let her just lane dominate one versus one. So she's fallen out of the top three, and I'm going to give it to... No, Sergeant Hammer. Sergeant Hammer rounds out my top three because after her buff and in the current meta, she just she makes my top three. She, had, she does a ridiculous amount of damage. Her late game is just disgusting and... She is super hard to kill. She's tanky. She's super tanky. So I have to I have to give Sergeant Hammer my my top three spot. The third spot. And let's just go I'll, I'll, go, I'll go through a quick talent rundown with you guys really quick. So Regen Master, if you have to, if you absolutely have to, in a one verse one or something, or one verse two, if you need the regen, it's fine to take. Advanced artillery, advanced artillery is what you want to take because that's ten percent extra damage. Resistant, if they have mass siege and if they have mass CC, and or you are planning on getting seat, hovering siege mode, this is the way to go. Level one, level four. So, fo uh, basic attack range is what you're going to be looking for here. Focus attack and excessive force can be cute, but the attack range is what makes hammer OP. First aid, napalm strike, giant killer. First strike is really fucking strong. If they, if you think it's gonna be, 
if you're never going to be getting hit, first strike is amazing. If you're doing a lot of split pushing where the team's going to leave you alone, first strike's amazing. And if they don't have, if they have like only one tank, first strike can really be good. Like if they have like three ranged and one tank, first strike can just do a shit ton of damage. But Giant Killer is probably going to be with it, the way to go in this meta because of how many high HP targets there will be for you to attack. Level 16. So she actually has four options that you can go. Executioner is going to give you a ridiculous amount of damage if you have Jaina or Arthas or anything like that. It's going to give you a lot of damage. Hover Siege Mode is pretty amazing if you need... If you can if you can allow to get it it's really good graduating range is going to be good on maps where you can set up and they have to come to you for objectives kind of like uh infernal shrines or maybe a cursed hollow tribute or something like that it'll be really strong stone skins obviously if you just need more tankiness and then level 20 she's actually got three options here too so advanced lava strike is what i like to take if i need to poke the back line Nexus Frenzy is probably going to be your main go-to because it's just ridiculous on her and it stacks with her Siege Mode. Fury of the Storm, while it's not really taken at all, I still think it has its situations where it's really good where you need a lot of PvE because it has, it has instant wave clear pretty much for her. But I'd say 99% of the time you're going to take one of these two. So that is it for the top three, guys. Uh, if you like the video and enjoy this content, hit the like button and it helps me out. Hit the subscribe button too if you want to see more videos in the future. I think the next videos I'm going to be coming out with are the top three melee assassins and the top three ranged assassins. And if the video that I did before this, the WCA finals commentary, if that gets enough views, I'll be doing the, the game two and game three in that series as well. So if you guys enjoy the com if you guys enjoy the content, just keep watching. It makes me want to make more videos. I really appreciate it. And that is it, guys. I will check you later. Peace.